Hello, everybody. Welcome to tonight's meeting. Thank you so much for joining us. I am Alicia Lehrer. I'm the Executive Director of the Winasquatucket River Watershed Council. And it is truly my pleasure to welcome you to today's public meeting so we can update you on the latest designs for the Winasquatucket River Greenway from Eagle Square to the Mall. With us this evening, we have Mayor Jorge Alorza, Council President Sabina Matos, Councilwoman Kat Kerwin, and also my staff member, Lisa Arecchia, who is our Director of Projects. We also have our partners from the City of Providence Plan Planning and Development Department. We have Bonnie Nickerson, Martina Haggerty, and Jessica Flaumer. And our consultants are gonna do most of the talking tonight, and they are from McMahon Associates, Horsley Witten Group, Cogent, and DeKiera Consulting. Para las personas que necesiten uh, traducción en español, el menú está uh, disponible para hacer clic en Close Caption y la, there will be an, habrá una interpretación de todo lo que se diga en inglés. Uh, Jessica Plummer will be able to co continue with the rest of the presentation. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us uh, to learn more about the Winnesquatucket Greenway uh, project. I'm just going to go over a few instructions for tonight's meeting uh, via Zoom, particularly for those of you who may not be familiar with using it. Um, first and foremost, the presentation for tonight is going to be, um, as well as comments and questions, will be recorded and made publicly available. We will be posting it to the city's project website. Um, and I believe the Watershed Council will also be posting the recording tomorrow. All participants are automatically muted. The chat window is available for questions about the presentation and this project. And you should be able to see on the screen right now um, on the bottom of the slide that there, um, if you hover your mouse over your screen, you have a few options, including um, Q&A and closed caption, should you need that for Spanish translation. Um, and raising your hand if you have a question. Um, participants will be removed from the meeting for inappropriate behavior. And um, again, I just wanna remind you that this meeting is being recorded and will be made publicly available. Otra vez como recordatorio, uh, la, la interpretación en español está disponible haciendo clic en closed caption. Thank you, Francisco. The Winnesquatucket River Watershed Council truly appreciates our partnership with the City of Providence. They have worked so closely with us through every step of this process, from funding to design to every single step. And we are especially grateful to Mayor Alorza with his wonderful planning department and their shared vision for what this corridor can become for all of us. So I welcome Mayor Alorza to come and say a few words about the project. All right, well, thank you, Alicia, and uh, welcome everybody. Good evening. I know that these are certainly different circumstances than we've met with in the past, but it's a new reality that we're all living in, and I'm sure this is not uh, folks' first Zoom meeting. Uh, we've all grown accustomed to it over the, um, over the past couple of months, and uh, I appreciate everyone making time to be with us in this, in this format. So, Alicia, you, you all have done amazing work in this neighborhood along this, this uh, uh, the watershed for such a long time and uh, you know more than anything else what I want you and everyone to know is that the city is strongly behind you and this project it's part of a shared vision that we have and what we want to do is lift you your organizations and, and your organizations and your vision uh, for for this corridor and uh, there's a there's very clear alignment there and especially in a moment like this where you know, all of us are just yearning to get outside, enjoy nature, and there's a lot of discussion about public health during the crisis, but also afterwards. We know that we have to make spaces like this accessible and inviting to the community. Along with that, you all know that we are strong, strong uh, believers in uh, uh, increasing bicycle and pedestrian amenities throughout the city. So it all fits in together in creating the kind of inviting, engaging, and beautiful a city that we all want to be a part of. 
So more than anything else, Alicia, thank you. We're strongly behind you. And I know that I have a couple of colleagues in the elected office that are here with me today. Uh, it goes without saying that Council President Sabina Matos has been a strong supporter of you and this project for a very long time. We have Councilwoman Kat Kerwin, who has hit the ground running since she came onto the council and uh, is doing a lot of great stuff in her neighborhood, so we appreciate them. And like everything else, this is a community-wide project. It only gets done uh, when uh, as the community is involved. So I appreciate the approach that you take to all of your work and know that in the city, you have a partner, you have an ally, and we're gonna to see to it that this stuff, that this work gets done. Thank you so much, Mayor Lorza. We really appreciate your support and you guys have been fantastic partners, as I've said. I would love to give uh, Council President Sabina Matos also a chance to say hello. Um, she has been a supporter of the Greenway from the very beginning. She is an activist in Onlyville and a wonderful leader of the city council. Sabina, would you like to say a couple words? Thank you. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you, Mayor Lorsa, also for your kind words. Um, it's really a pleasure for me to be here with all of you to see the plan. And also, I'm glad to see all the members of the community that have joined also, and I'm looking forward to hearing from them and their feedback about this plan. Um, the city brought to um, Providence uh, the city staff, the planning staff wrote a few months back, uh, Guillermo Peñalosa, um, and his chat was amazing. I'm so glad that, that we had the opportunity to hear him at the city council. And he always, um, he gave me a set of cards that I have, and I'm always reading the messages in there. And there's two messages that I want to share with you. One is, it says, what if everything we did in our city was great for an eight-year-old and for an eight-year-old. And the other one that I really like a lot, it says, we need to stop building communities as if everyone was 30-year-old and athletic. We must create cities for all. So what I'm looking forward out of this project is to make sure that the project is gonna add to the walkability of the city and to make sure that it's accessible to everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council President Matos. You have been such a champion for us and we truly appreciate you. Um, I am gonna go over a little bit of the corridor history of the Winasquatucket. I'm just gonna go over it briefly um, because we really wanna get into the meat of the new designs. But just so you have a little context of what has happened to date. Um, the Winasquatucket River Greenway began as an idea in the mid 1990s. At that time, there were no safe parks and 60% of the people that lived in Olneyville did not have their own cars or access to vehicles. I think we're going to the next slide. Today, more than 25 years later, we've leveraged over $120 million to create more than 75 acres of parkland along the river. And these are connected by seven miles of off-road and on-road trail from Johnston through Onlyville into downtown Providence. Our team of river rangers maintains all of the public spaces that we've helped to create. The section of the Greenway that, we're, that uh, we're planning now will create the last vital safe separated path to link all of it to downtown and make the valley a destination that everyone will want to enjoy. The Greenway is an integral part of the city's 2018 Winasquatucket Vision Plan. As we continue the presentation, you're going to see how the Greenway, as well as the plan, improves sustainability and resiliency, supports arts, food and makers, improves access and connectivity, creates wonderful public spaces. So now I want to bring on Francisco Levera. He's our design team leader at McMahon Associates, and he's going to go over the project and the scope of our latest designs. 
Francisco. Thank you so much, Alicia. Um, as Alicia mentioned, um, the project has four specific goals. Um, foremost, improving the safety of the people who are walking and riding a bicycle in the project area. Um, with that also, the intent is to enhance access to, access to the river. As people walk bike, or mostly drive in the area now, they don't see the river, the river is hidden. Um, the intent also is to improve the connectivity that exists or does not exist very well between the uh, neighborhoods of Olneyville Valley, Smith Hill, and the downtown. And we're taking this opportunity to as well mitigate some of the flooding and improve the water quality that exists on, on the project. Nevertheless, the project is not something that is mandated at a higher level. We are looking for community input. Um, the process which has been uh, involved in the evaluation of the site, as well as the uh, getting some public input and moving into final design and getting uh, uh, the project under construction uh, in the future. The, this slide is indicating the stages of where we are today. Today, we have our second public meeting. We had a public meeting last year. This one, we want to present with a little more detail the different concept elements that we have come up to date. Uh, understanding that it's still a 10% design is very conceptual. We are on their, uh, on their ex the expectation that the comments that we receive today from the public, as well as uh, from partner agencies, uh, DM, DOT, uh, Coastal Resources Management, um, will may have some tweaks to the to the design. But overall, what you will see today is exactly, uh, or will be similar to what we expected to have uh, under construction. Our goal is to have a complete package of uh, plans and contract documents that could be advertised later in the spring of next year, hoping that the construction would actually take place in the spring of 2021, as well as during uh, 2022. Next slide. Now, uh, you, if you ever have driven in the area, you are familiar with this intersection, Eagle Square, Eagle Street and Kingsley, in Kingsley, Kingsley Avenue. Uh, the current conditions of that area are slightly different, and I'm sarcastic on that, to what is shown on the rendering. The rendering is showing some of the elements that we foresee will be implemented as part of this project. There will be a new traffic signal. Some areas that are currently dedicated for vehicles will be reallocated for green spaces, um, a path that will be exclusively used by people who are uh, on a bike or on a, any other faster than walking, but not a, a motor vehicle, mode of transportation, as well as preserving areas that are walking. And all the extra space that we can use from that will be dedicated for green infrastructure, uh, green areas that are um, well needed in, 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 uh, in these times. Um, as we move to the next slides, we will go through different sections of the project and we will be able to discuss some of the proposed roadway improvements. Um, now, we went from the beautiful picture to the engineering cut um, plans. I apologize for that. We're engineers, we're very square. Um, in these elements, you can start making a reference between what was shown on the prior slide in terms of green spaces, vegetation, some of the areas that are dedicated for bikes. Whenever there's a conflict between a bike and, um, and a uh, bike facility and motor vehicles, there is green paint that is serving on two purposes, indicating for a bicyclist where is a better way to location to cross as well as for motor vehicles to identify where they need to expect a bicycle in that area. And as noted in this slide also, there is that aspect of that additional space that is currently used for cars, but it's not necessarily needed for capacity purposes, can be dedicated for other uh, elements. In this particular case, that right turn from Eagle into Kingsley is prone to high speeds. We have done analysis and we feel that that is not necessarily needed for capacity and operations, and it actually could improve the safety. It is modified in the, in the way that is presented. Um, next slide. Continuing along the corridor, uh, this is an element that will be discussed further down the road. 
there is a um, kayak launch that is proposed in this area between um, with access from Kingsley Avenue between Eagle Street and Sims Avenue. Uh, our consultant that is specifically um, talking about green infrastructure and, and, and uh, um, placement, placemaking will be able to describe more in detail, but some of the elements that are uh, provided here are more crosswalks for people who are on the side of the buildings looking to access the facility. They are going to, they are proposed to be high visibility to indicate where pedestrians are in a better position to cross as well as for motor vehicles to be aware that there is a pedestrian coming in that area. The other element that is proposed on to, um, on the, on the project, you can see that Kingsley Avenue is one way, one lane only from Eagle Street towards uh, the mall area. Um, and in order to improve the conditions for someone who is biking and walking, we're proposing to have chicanes, meaning uh, slight zigzagging on the alignment of the roadway. Um, so someone who is driving does not see open pavement and they are forced to slide back and forth uh, um, and reduce their operating speeds. We know that these elements have been used in other projects, in other areas to uh, reduce the speeds, and it actually helps to uh, bring drivers to a more humane uh, speed operations. We have obtained traffic counts in the area and the operating speeds are not surprisingly close to 40 miles an hour, which is not necessarily the kind of speeds that you would be uh, hoping to have your kids or your family walking and enjoying a, 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 a stroll on, on the area. Next slide. Next slide. We have done extensive coordination with everybody, almost everybody who's been willing to talk to us um, on what they see uh, before, before we go there, Natalie. We have talked to everybody who, who has been in the area. Um, I think we're missing, if we're gonna go one slide before. Thank you. Um, we, as anyone who is a uh, resident or drives, walks in this uh, section of the corridor have noticed that Farm Fresh is building a new facility uh, adjacent to Sims Avenue and Kingsley Avenue. We have had co coordinations with them uh, to, making sure, to make sure that the project as we are proposing it is not gonna have a negative effect on how people and businesses have access to their site. Uh, we have extensive meetings with uh, Farm Fresh as well as with other stakeholders and people who, who, who have businesses in the area to get their input, to hear what they are, uh, their concerns are. In this particular case, Farm Fresh has uh, two driveways allocated there and they need those to uh, provide access to tractor trailers that are bringing uh, goods to their building. So the facility in this location is providing uh, uh, merging of the bike facility and the um, sidewalk in order to make some space for those for the trucks. You can see some red areas that have been noted on the slides. Uh, those are proposed to be truck aprons, which are a small vertical elevation on the roadway, enough that it makes you uncomfortable as a driver to, to go over those, but it still allows tractor trailers and other bigger vehicles to navigate through that. Uh, the intent is not only to provide that those elements on the roadway for the tractor trailers that are used in the area, but also for uh, escape route. If a vehicle happens to break down in, in Kingsley Avenue, uh, there will be an, uh, an area that is still dedicated for vehicles where someone or an emergency vehicle will be able to navigate and go around that disabled vehicle. Um, next. Next slide, uh, Nelly. 
this interest, this uh, slide shows similar similar improvements. Um, you may notice that as you walk through the area, there are two bridges. Those bridges um, have been evaluated to what could be needed if they wish to be rehabilitated by the city at some point in the future, not part of this project. But if that happens as a separate project in the future, we are accounting for a, a uh, crosswalk with high visibility. Um, again, with the intent that people who are walking know where what is a more appropriate location for them to cross and drivers are aware that they uh, they need to slow down because there will be a, a pedestrian crossing there. In this particular case, uh, we're proposing that that crossing would be elevated to even um, reduce the operating speeds of drivers on Kingsley Avenue to better environment for people who are walking and biking, which is a key element on, on the project. And across the corridor, we're proposing to have also new um, sidewalks wherever the, there is going to be a disturbance on, 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 uh, on the project area. Next slide. Uh, next slide, uh, Nelly. As we move forward to the east of the corridor, we get to uh, Acorn Street, which is a that bridge that provides connection to the north side and um, of the river, and it also has access to Valley Street. Uh, we are proposing certain elements. Um, you can tell there are a couple of squares in the intersection of Hemlock Street and uh, Promenade Street. Um, that corner has been identified and we have witnessed it as uh, people who are walking and biking there, uh, that drivers are driving at very high speed in that intersection. So we're uh, proposing to use uh, speed um, pillows, which will help reduce the operating speeds of people who are driving on the area. These elements are a standard in the city of province. They have been used in other sections, even in Bali Street, um, to mitigate those higher speeds. Um, in this area, we also show how the facility continues on the south side of the river. Uh, on the north side of Promenade, which is an existing bike facility, we're proposing that that bike lane on the north side of the river is painted with green uh, high visibility paint, pavement marking, to indicate bikers where they are expected to have to be uh, riding, as well as for motor vehicles to understand and to expect that potential conflict. The other element that we are proposing as part of this project is curb extensions, uh, which as you can see on an example that is noted there, uh, what it basically does is reduce the crossing area, the crossing length of a crosswalk for someone who is walking and crossing the street while taking um, advantage of that space to potentially provide some green areas uh, that could be vegetated and making, making the um, environment as you're walking or biking a lot more pleasant. Even when you're driving, it, it, it is more, more pleasant for you. Uh, and the side effect also is that as a driver, you are uh, forced to slow down because you have cues that prevent you from going high speed. Next intersection. Next uh, slide. Next slide. There, there we go. This intersection um, is one of the major uh, locations in um, along the corridor. It provides access from the city to the freeway system and, and vice versa from the freeway system into the city. Uh, it I'll somehow provide some connection with 95 off ramp, north, the northbound off ramp, as well as people who are coming into the city from 6 and 10 uh, via 6 and 10 into the mall, into the uh, State House Hill as well. Um, this intersection is owned by the Department of Transportation, and we are in close coordination with the final design that we'll have uh, at, this, uh, at this location. The elements that we are proposing to have is to include some green paint on the crossings uh, where bikes and pets would be expected to go. Uh, bikes with green paint, uh, pedestrians will be with the traditional crosswalk. Uh, but the intent is that uh, we're providing crossings in a way that drivers and pedestrians know where they, they need to be, but also um, um, uh, 
uh, in a way that uh, minimizes the conflicts with them. As, and as I mentioned before, we are um, uh, in coordination with the department and uh, we will be uh, fine tuning the details of the design as we move forward, as well as with the input that we receive from, from the public. Next. The facility is on the south side of the river. Uh, the best location that we have determined at uh, this point to provide the crossing to the north side of the river is at the existing Bad Street Bridge. Um, one of the elements that we, we know that we can implement as part of this project is a path, mark path in, over the bridge that indicates where bicycles are expected to be. We have gone to another, to another step to figure out what could be there. Um, we have potentially ambition benches, uh, trees, uh, maybe some street vendors. Those finer elements that could be implemented on that bridge are not necessarily part of the current project. They are visions that can be utilized by the city and by the council, the watershed council, as they move to different stages on the design of this corridor. Um, we have a limited amount of money that is allocated for this project. So there are elements that can be uh, implemented in this current phase. And there are elements that are envisioned that also could be implemented in, a, in any future uh, phases. Um, Promenade Street in this case is two lanes in the eastbound direction towards the signal that I was mentioning before. Given the amount of capacity that is needed for that intersection. This uh, is a heavily utilized intersection during the peak hours for commuters, people who live and work in the city or come in, uh, in work into the city, but live in the suburbs. So we're very cognizant that uh, the project will have to uh, uh, balance all the competing, uh, competing interests. Next slide. And some of the elements that we have envisioned is that the extra space that is not necessarily uh, required for uh, motor vehicles to transit this area, it can be transformed into green space, a buffer space. Uh, instead of riding adjacent to the, uh, to the motor vehicles, you can actually ride and have some plants that are giving you that buffer, that comfort that you're not going to be run over by, by a vehicle. It may not be necessarily the case, but just the having that buffer itself will give you that uh, peace of mind, that comfort that you will not be uh, overtaken by a car. Uh, and similarly, you, we can see a few chicanes in that, in, that, um, in that section of Promenade Street and Bad Street uh, Bridge itself, uh, given the current analysis that we have, is proposed to change from a two-way circulation that will be open in the short term once the DOT is complete, completing their current construction re rehabilitation of that project. Um, but under the current analysis, we're proposing that that bridge will be changed to a one-way only in the northbound direction to allow uh, drivers to get access to the north side of the river, to the lo locations on the north side of the river. Um, next slide. Some of the other changes that are noted here, um, the, there has been uh, a development that is being proposed and accepted by the, by the city of Providence that uh, will reallocate or redesign or change the configuration of the current intersection of Harris Avenue and Providence Place. As part of our analysis and our current analysis, we feel that province place could be transformed into a two-way facility. So someone who is coming from the hill would be able to utilize Harris Avenue as an alternate route instead of just uh, using Promenade Street as currently is the case. Um, and we are reconfiguring that intersection with the uh, new right-of-way that has been adjusted because of the development on that corner um, southeast corner of Providence Place at Harris Avenue. We are proposing some chicanes as noted before, and um, we are also uh, proposing on their, this concept, and uh, as of now, 
we are thinking that this section on Promenade Street between Holden Street, uh, which is uh, noted there, you can tell that there is a different texture on that section of the road towards the mall, ent uh, mall exit, it's not an entrance, but a mall exit and under the viaduct to be a raised uh, roadway, uh, similar to what is shown on the picture. The intent is that drivers, when they are navigating in this section of the road, they are driving at speeds that are more conducive for coexisting with um, pedestrians and bicyclists. There is going to be some um, protection for 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 pedestrians when when they when they are in this section that is a gate for them, but the intent is to provide some race uh, roadway to reduce the speeds of people who are driving in the area. Next. And I was mentioned before that uh, our current analysis shows that Park Street uh, will be able to be uh, transformed into a two-way facility and provide access to Harris Avenue instead of having to go to Promenade Street. Um, we have had coordination with uh, a lot of the stakeholders and about us, as I mentioned before. One of them has been the mall. We have taken into account their input to make sure that the trucks that are currently servicing the mall still have access to the mall and that when they leave at the mall, they also have an opportunity to continue to access the freeway system. Um, some of the beautification elements that are considered are a uh, mural that is depicted on that picture. And the intent for that mural is to provide a welcome for uh, anyone who is coming from under the mall uh, biking or walking into the into the proposed greenway. Yeah, you can see the in the rendering that uh, currently there are two lanes uh, allocated for prominent street. We are thinking that uh, one lane is only sufficient to uh, continue to provide that access for anyone who is trying to uh, reach the freeway system now, not only via promenade, but also utilizing province place as well as Harris um, Avenue. And um, we can go into the next slide. This slide um, shows um, the proposed improvements that we have for the intersection of Francis Street and Financial Way. This location provides access to the mall and provides access also to a path underneath the mall that connects to the other intersection where the mural was noted. This signalized intersection, as well as any other one that is under the city jurisdiction, um, one of the side effects that we have had with the current uh, health crisis is that every sig signal in the city of Providence that is owned by the city has a uh, pet recall, what we call pet recall, but um, for anyone who is walking, they don't need to push the button to get uh, the right of way. The intent for the project is that all the signals that are under the city jurisdiction will have this feature. Nobody will have to push the button. They simply will be able to get there and wait their turn and the signal will roll back and forth between the different faces and provide that access to, to the pedestrians. The other element that is not, and it's hard to depict on a, on a slide, but it's noted for this intersection as well as all the other intersections that are owned by the city of Providence is a lead pedestrian interval which will allow um, pedestrians to take over the crosswalk, start walking for three or four seconds before the green um, is given to the, to the motor vehicles that are driving in the same direction. So if someone is crossing finance way, as it's noted over there, uh, everybody who is driving will be stopped for three or four seconds, and they will be able to be in the middle of the crosswalk before Francis Street, vehicles on Francis Street are given the green. This has been proven in many other locations across the country and is a recommended safety countermeasure by Federal Highway as a way to improve pedestrian safety in urban areas. Um, this is the summary of all the roadway improvements that are proposed along the whole corridor. I want to introduce um, the rest of the team. Um, before I go there, I, I wanna to talk to about these signs. Uh, some of the other elements that are proposed as part of this project is wayfinding signage that the council and the, uh, the council has developed in prior projects. Uh, they have a good 
set of plans on potential locations for these signs. We're going to take what was uh, developed at that time and include it into this uh, project to enhance the, the, the experience for a pedestrian as well as um, provide guidance for someone who is walking or uh, riding their bike along the corridor. And now I will be happy to introduce the rest of the design team, John Ford and Ellen Bigard, which will be able to give us some more input uh, description on what the project is proposing in terms of green infrastructure and placemaking. Okay, thanks so much, Francisco, and good evening, everyone. I'm John Ford. Uh, so as Francisco previously discussed, the key goal for this project is to help mitigate flooding and improve water quality. So the project design is addressing this goal in three ways as so shown in these uh, green infrastructure maps. First, the greenway design will reduce overall pavement in the corridor. So what's currently shown as uh, what's currently paved surface will be replaced and planted uh, with landscape uh, plants in the form of vegetated buffers and bump outs shown in dark green on these maps. Second, we know the incredible value of trees to a neighborhood. Shade trees reduce heat island effect, they add value for traffic calming, and they help with stormwater. The project proposes over 50 new canopy shade trees, which are shown by the uh, green circles in these maps throughout this section of the Greenway. We're detailing and budgeting for the appropriate soil volumes and engineered soils to ensure long-term growth of these trees. And third, wherever we can, we're proposing to design new planted areas as green infrastructure, which means designing planted areas located at low points in the street's topography to accept stormwater runoff from the street pavement, filtering and infiltrating it into the ground as close to the source of rainfall as possible. So preliminary locations for green infrastructure are shown on these maps by the numbered circles. So you can see the intent here is to spread small, simple systems throughout the project. Here's an example of a type of green infrastructure, a bioretention system or sometimes called a rain garden. So these systems are sized to fill up and filter runoff from small storms with a bypass overflow during larger storm events. They're meant to be beautiful elements within the streetscape. I call this lovable infrastructure, where their function is visible and clear so as to make maintenance more straightforward. We're also looking at tree trenches as green infrastructure option where plantable surface area is not available. So these systems are essentially souped up street trees. They're designed to accept stormwater runoff from a catch basin that backfeeds the tree root zone. When the capacity is exceeded, runoff overflows to the river via a bypass pipe set higher in the catch basin. Though they may be difficult to implement as part of the greenway design to, due to soil and infrastructure constraints, these tree trenches are still being investigated as an option to provide additional water quality treatment and improve tree health. Hi, I'm Ellen from our Whitten Group. Um, we're looking for opportunities for placemaking and locations for about pocket parks and gathering spots. The corridor was uploaded as a whole to review um, all the opportunities and, and determine which spots were the highest priority to include in this first phase of work. Uh, we know consideration for future moments and connections that could be implemented as part of future phases will be an important part of continuing the momentum as this portion of the corridor keeps building. Um, along the length of the trail, we identified three potential kayak launches, shown as the orange stop on the map in front of you. Um, these were selected based on um, bank slope, location along the corridor, and potential access from parking and residential areas. The launch between Sims Ave and Eagle Street was selected for this phase of work, or the orange dot with the black circle around it. Um, for the pocket parks, several locations were identified based on available room, access from the street, and opportunities for gathering. The park locations at Acorn Street and Promenade Street and Leland Street and Promenade Street were selected. 
for the larger pink dots with the black circle around them. Um, the kayak launch along Kinsley Avenue between Sims Ave and, and Eagle Street was selected because of the proximity to residential buildings, new parking being created along Kingsley Ave, and the gentle slope leading to the bank, um, at least gentle relative to the rest of the corridor, where a lot of times it might be wall or a very steep slope. Um, this location can help minimize disturbance along the bank and create a ramp to the river that is ADA accessible and comfortable to slide a boat into. At the top of the ramp, we are providing a small gathering area for people to stage boats, hang out, and wait for each other after a trip. Um, one of the pocket parks that was selected is on the bank of the river at the end of Holden Street, next to the Alco building. Uh, this location was already relatively flat area with existing canopy trees and a comfortable view over the river with some selective pruning. The entrance into the space will come from around the existing guardrail and the areas created will accommodate seating for a small group. Um, to keep the naturalistic feel of the river edge and maintain shading, as many of the existing trees will be kept as possible. And as we continue to de develop, we will look for incorporating a sculpture um, and creating a stronger connection to the existing path behind the Alco building. Hi, so um, the public art section of this plan um, is in line with uh, the Providence Department of Art, Culture and Tourism's public art master plan which is available to the public online so what we've done is we've tried to identify opportunities within this project that can realize some of the goals of that master plan and some of those opportunities could be partnering with the rhode island department of transportation to cite um, something colorful and bright like a mural underneath the I-95 overpass um, where the new viaduct will be, as well as um, integrating artistic elements along the river, such as uh, historic marble that has been found um, at the Farm Fresh Rhode Island site at their building site. We're talking with them about ways we might use that as a natural element. And uh, the Wanasquatucket River Watershed Council has also uh, wanted to site sculptures all up and down the river. And so we have located a couple of sites where we hope to integrate those plans into this plan. Uh, our overall plan locates about seven areas for specific public art installations, which would then become a partnership with the Providence Department of Arts, Culture, and Tourism to make those uh, projects a reality, as well as partnering with local nonprofits. Um, the Providence Department of Art, Culture, and Tourism has a selection process that they implement, and we would be um, partnering with them or really working with them to make sure that, that they can make that process happen. Um, and then in a recent part of the project, we cited areas, we uh, identified areas where um, in order to realize one aspect of the Wanasquatucket vision plan, uh, where artists could be given opportunities to do pop-up happenings, arts happenings, and where they could have pop-up markets or performance spaces so that arts as an economic sector um, could be realized as, as an ongoing part of this project. Sorry, it was a little slow off the mark there, trying to unmute and uh, reveal my screen there. 
Um, thank you, Christina, and thank you to the whole design team for that great explanation of what we can expect for the corridor coming up here. And I know all of you will um, join me in thanking the whole team for that. But now is the chance that we get to hear from you. So Martina Haggerty from the Providence Planning Department is reading your questions in the comments in the order in which they received, and the team is going to chime in to address every single one of them. Thank you, Alicia. And as a reminder, if you have a question that you have not been able to ask yet, please use the comments or a Q&A button on your screen to, to type at your question, and we will add it to the queue. Si alguien necesita traducción o interpretación en español, por favor también uh, haga clic en el botón para levantar la mano y podremos leer y responder las preguntas en español y en inglés, respectivamente. All right, our, our first question um, is from Melissa. And Melissa wants to know if we are considering native plants or pollinator gardens as part of the project. Yes. Uh, we are considering native plants and pollinator gardens that will help provide habitat for native species within the watershed. Um, do John from our team, uh, the landscape architect portion of our team, do you want to add anything to that? Um, I'll let Ellen um, chime in if, if she could. Um, yes, everything that we're going to be looking to use is native, not just to uh, increase habitat, but also because it's going to be the most resilient fence that we can use in this area um, and are built for this environment. So, yes, everything to have those multi layered benefits of using native plants. Great. Uh, our next question uh, is about the truck aprons. Will there be some amount of separation between the truck apron and the shared use path? And I am going to let Francisco from our consultant team answer this question. Thank you, Martina. The truck apron and the pad will be separated in the spaces where we can actually provide that, that separation, which is our intent. There may be other locations in which the limited space that we have available would not allow us to do so, but our uh, goal standard to, so to speak, will be to provide that buffer. Um, one of the characteristics of the corridor, and it has, it has been identified as part of the vision plan, is that there is an industrial character and use in the corridor area. Uh, the project is not looking to pre prevent or hinder that use under current conditions or in the future. So we are currently uh, looking at those as a way to provide lesser space for more vehicles, but uh, still allowing those tractor trailers to navigate the area. Great, thank you, Francisco. And as a reminder, if you, uh, it's not too late to submit a question or a comment, you can do so via the, the chat feature, the Q&A button on your screen. All right. Uh, what signage is necessary to inform drivers who have not encountered truck aprons before that they should slow down? And is it visible even in the snow? Francisco, would you mind taking that? Yes, Martina. Um, just want to confirm, quiero confirmar con uh, o.lemus at hotmail.com. Necesita uh, traducción en español. Si puede escribir su pregunta en el chat, uh, podremos traducir la, la respuesta para la traducir las, las preguntas y las respuestas para usted. Um, regarding the question specifically on drivers, um, the truck apron is will be on a different color and in a different elevation, so it should be visible for motor vehicles and also is not um, to the same elevation as a sidewalk. So it will feel uncomfortable for the first time that a driver is going over the truck apron, will still be visible in the snow um, in the sense that you will see 
Um, the snow in the different elevation between the sidewalk, the roadway, and the truck apron uh, is not a new element that has not been implemented in New England. They have been typically utilized in roundabouts. There is at least um, a few roundabouts in the area that um, that have utilized it. So it's not something that we're introducing to that. Um, la pregunta fue sobre el tipo de señales que existen o que se necesitan para los camello, las, eh, caminos elevados para los camiones. Eh, la idea es que eh, sean visibles, serán de un diferente color de la acera y del pavimento. La, el diseño es tal que los autos pueden subirse, pero es incómodo. Hay lugares en otros partes de Nueva Inglaterra donde se han utilizado, inclusive con nieve es posible verlos, um, uh, pero no tienen una señal específica. Thank you, Francisco. All right, um, our next question um, is asking, uh, could we get an additional crosswalk or something to walk safely from the Rhode Island Blood Center to the bridge? I don't know if it is possible for us to flick back to that on the screen, that section of the plan on the screen, but it might be helpful while Francisco answers that. Thank you, Martina. And, and um, Natalie, I think it's one of the slides after the Dean Street. The, la pregunta es sobre existe un cruce de peatones entre el centro de sangre de Rhode Island y la la, el, el, la ciclovía que está propuesta. Um, in order to install a crosswalk, we need to make sure that the crosswalk make, meets the warrants for a um, for the demand. And there are certain warrants that we need to uh, confirm. I think that 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 will be it. Um, there are certain war. The, the next slide, Ali. There are certain criteria that. Um, you, you went a little too far. There is a certain criteria that a crosswalk needs to meet or a location needs to meet to in order to install it. Um, we have not looked into a crosswalk between the Rhode Island Blood Center and the facility, but that's something that we can take into account. Um, co no es posible instalar cruces peatonales en cualquier lugar. Um, Tenemos que estar seguros de que la ubicación y las condiciones eh, cumplen con los criterios de, eh, y estándares de, de diseño de ingeniería. No habíamos eh, considerado un cruce peatonal en ese, uh, eh, del, entre el centro de sangre, el Rodan Blood Center y la ciclovía, pero buscaremos la información para confirmar si es posible o si no es este, factible instalarlo en ese lugar. Thank you, Francisco. All right, our next question is, are cyclists traveling from Eagle Square to Providence Place Mall expected to switch to the north side of the river at Kinsley Avenue in this design? Um, la pregunta es si los ciclistas que están en la Eagle Square, que quieren vaya a viajar de Eagle Square hacia Providence Place, el mall, tienen que moverse al norte del, al lado norte del río, del, del río en, um, en la avenida Kingsley con este diseño. The, the intent is that uh, anyone who is traveling on the facility the facilities design is intended that anyone who is um, novelty onto, um, who is not a traditional biker, who is not someone who bikes and is comfortable enough with riding with motor vehicles, uh, will be able to utilize the facility. Um, currently, the, the, the way that is proposed, the rider, unusual rider, or even someone who is walking and enjoying a stroll will be able to utilize the facility and to continue to have that same comfort, we'll have to switch to the north side of the river on um, Bad Street Bridge. Uh, this is where we have enough space towards um, the entrance to the mall 
to provide that crossing. And there is the connection, direct connection with the path that exists under the mall. Anyone who is a rider, a cyclist who is comfortable enough with ride with motor vehicles, uh, and there are many in the city of Providence, they will be able to continue to do so if they wish to. Uh, but the intent of the facility is that anyone who is not as comfortable to do so, and I'm talking about my children who are seven and four, will be able to follow the facility and, and, and feel comfortable doing this. Um, la respuesta a la pregunta es que eh, la ciclovía está diseñada para que cualquier persona que no está muy cómoda en, para andar en bicicleta uh, pueda continuar viajar de Eagle Square hacia el mall en la parte sur del río, cruzar al norte en el, en el puente peatonal y continuar en el norte del río para llegar al mall. Si alguien es suficientemente cómodo para andar en bicicleta junto a los coches en, en la calle, puede continuar haciéndolo. Uh, hay muchos casos en, al, uh, uh, en la ciudad de Providence, hay muchas personas que lo hacen así y pueden seguir haciéndolo. Pero la idea y el objetivo del proyecto es que personas que no uh, manejan bicicleta de manera co cotidiana como mis hijas de 4 y 7 años puedan utilizar la, las ciclovías como esta propuesta. Thanks, Martín. Thank you, Francisco. All right, our next question uh, is about the area near Paul Coffee School. Um, this person uh, commented, there are often parents waiting to pick up or drop off children at Paul Coffee. Um, and they'll need somewhere to wait. And um, Francisco, maybe you could talk a bit about um, what the plan is there to accommodate um, pickups and drop-offs from Coffee. Thank you, Martina. La pregunta es sobre el conflicto que existe entre la gente que anda en bicicleta y las personas que manejan el coche para ir a la Paul Coffee School. Eh, so we have met with uh, Paul Coffee and we have heard their concerns as well. The, intended um, design for the for the facility is that we could take a lane away from Promenade Street. There is not enough vehicle demand in that section of the of Promenade Street that requires two lanes, two travel lanes. We would be formalizing a parking lane adjacent to the school and uh, moving the bike lane to the middle in, in between those two. There will still be some interaction or overlap between the paths of someone who is biking in the facility and someone who is driving and dropping off or picking up their kids. Um, uh, that's why the uh, bike lane is proposed to be highlighted with green high visibility paint um, to advise both uh, bicyclists of where they need to be, but also drivers where they can expect a, um, a bicyclist. Uh, we are aware that um, there are some traffic demands that take place at Paul Coffee um, be be between people trying to park and people trying to just do a quick drop off. Um, we have talked to Paul Coffee and there may be some considerations on changing this, the parking configuration along, um, uh, I forgot the name of the street, Bradburn Street. Um, and there may be a possibility to implement in some of that. Uh, it is uncertain. Um, it is uncertain about if it will be implemented as part of this project or not. But there is some something that we have been uh, ha we have had in consideration. Um, hemos platicado con la escuela de, de Paul Coffee ahí y hemos tenido en cuenta que o recibido sus comentarios de los conflictos que existen entre la gente que, que se estaciona, la gente que viene a dejar a sus hijos. El, la idea es reducir el número de carriles en Promenade Street. Esa sección no tiene tanta demanda de, moro, de vehículos. Eh, se definirá un área de estacionamiento que será utilizada para dejar y recoger a los niños. Y se ha marcado la ciclovía para ciclistas experim experimentados en pintura verde. De esa manera pueden interactuar y esperar tanto los ciclistas donde deben de estar y los uh, automovilistas donde pueden esperar el conflicto. Thanks. Thank you, Francisco. All right, our next question is about um, access to the river itself. Um, ideas from your past included something like a dock to allow people to get intimate with the river. Is anything like that possible with this project? 
Yes, absolutely. To answer that, uh, we are considering ways to improve community and resident access to the river through things like kayak launches and better viewing points along the entire corridor. Those details are available um, throughout the, the presentation this evening, uh, which is now posted to our project website, and we'll bring that website up again at the end of the meeting. So you can revisit that and zoom into the specific details and see really what we're proposing there. Uh, había una, la pregunta es sobre lugares que estén destinados para que la gente pueda acercarse al río y sentirse un poco más cerca de la naturaleza. Si sí hay lugares identificados, están en el plan, en los planes que se han mostrado esta presentación y los planes preliminares de diseño estarán disponibles, están ya disponibles en el sitio web de la ciudad. Si alguien quiere eh, ubicarlos, puede localizarlo ahí. Thank you, Francisco. All right, our next question is about crosswalks. Could some of the crosswalks be creative and colorful in design, perhaps with a river theme? Um, the, the short answer is, is yes. We are looking for opportunities to integrate art into the project through sculpture, ground murals, and that could potentially include ground murals near or around the white crosswalk bars. Um, la pregunta es sobre si habría una forma de marcar los cruces peatonales de una manera más creativa, no solamente con las barras blancas. La respuesta es que sí, se está considerando arte público como parte de estos, de las eh, mejoras que pueden implementarse, no necesariamente con este dinero, pero um, la idea es explorar lugares donde puede haber pintura diferente de, de diferente color que, que las uh, líneas blancas de los cruces peatonales. All right, our next question um, is, do we have plans that go west or south past Eagle? Um, the, again, the short answer there is, is yes. Um, I would refer to the City of Providence's Great Streets Master Plan for sort of the citywide scale back view of how this project fits into the surrounding street grid and other improvements. Uh, we do hope to make improvements to the rest of Eagle Street between Kinsley and Atwell's Avenues. However, that would be a separate project. Uh, we are working on a conceptual design for that uh, to make that part of the street safer and build. La pregunta es sobre hay algunos planes de extender las ciclovías hacia el oeste o hacia el sur de Eagle Street. La respuesta es sí. La ciudad ha desarrollado un plan maestro de eh, Greater Streets, de mejores calles. Eh, y la idea es de que se pueda extender las, las, um, uh, las ciclovías a través de Eagle Street, Kingsley Avenue y, um, y Apples Avenue. El proyecto, este proyecto no podrá implementar la sección as, en Eagle Street hasta Apples Avenue, pero hay, estamos creando eh, diseños concept, en concepto para eso. Our next question is, will there be an opportunity to allow or support food vendors and such? That's a great question. And I don't know if um, whoever's controlling the slides can flip to the, the, the art slide. Um, one of the things that we were thinking about is in some of the pocket parks and other opportunities that we're creating along the corridor that um, it, it could be an opportunity for either food vendors or art vendors to set up shop there. It could be everything from Adele's lemonade stand to to a coffee cart one day, to a local artist selling their wares. Um, there you can see the, the Greenway Arts opportunity on this slide shows an example of some kind of a, a, a cart that could be featured out there. And that again, could be food or, or art or anything else. La pregunta uh, fue sobre eh, iniciativas de arte uh, público y si sí, hay lugares que se han destinado para el arte público como la, la imagen que se muestra ahí la, el, 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 el objetivo del proyecto es uh, designar espacios para que los artistas puedan realizar arte público o si tienen el arte público lo puedan vender inclusive a otras áreas donde pueda haber eh, food trucks para, para eh, activar un poco más la actividad que tiene lugar en el, a lo largo del corredor 
Correct. Okay, our next question is about the passageway uh, underneath Interstate 95 near the mall end of the project. Kelly would like to know how will the under promenade place passageway be kept safe and secure for passage. Uh, that's absolutely something that we are working on with this project. Uh, we want to create a not only safer environment in terms of the, the physical layout of the roadway, but also make it a more active space, have more eyes on the street there to make it safer. And we are working with the DOT to open up that space a little bit under there and are even looking at some lighting and artistic opportunities underneath the viaduct there to really liven up the space and better illuminate it so it is safer. La pregunta era para mejoras en el corredor que existe debajo del mall, del centro comercial, si hay um, y, eh, eh, reconocimiento de que esta zona es un poco incómoda para navegar eh, pe como peatón o como ciclista. Eh, no es parte de ese proyecto, pero la ciudad está en conversaciones con el departamento de transporte y con el mall para poder implementar ciertas mejoras independientes de este proyecto para eh, mejorar el ambiente de cualquier persona que está caminando o andando en bicicleta debajo del mall. All right, our next question uh, is about community gardens. Was there consideration for community gardens along the corridor? And I'm going to pass that over to Alicia from the Watershed Council if you'd like to, like to answer that one. Well, we really weren't considering community gardens here um, because First of all, the soils are not amenable um, to growing food and flowers, but we really want to make it as much of a garden space, park space as possible. So it, consider it a garden for the community. La pregunta fue sobre jardines públicos. Si había alguna consideración para, para incluirlos apart, como parte de ese proyecto. Por mucho que uno quisiera eh, dedicar esos espacios para jardines de hortalizas, desgraciadamente la condición del suelo no es la adecuada para proveer estos lugares. De otra manera, si se, si se considerarían. Thank you. Um, what, if anything, will be done to help with traffic during the construction of this project? Francisco, could you uh, speak a little bit about traffic controls during construction? Yes, the, la pregunta fue ¿qué, qué se va a hacer con, para manejar el tráfico durante la construcción. That's a very good question, Martina. We have not gotten to the point that we can speak on specifics of what the traffic controls would be. However, um, we are cognizant that there will be an overlap with the viaduct that will be under construction at that time, so there will be coordination between the city and the DOT contractors when that is taking place. The intent is at all times to preserve access to the people who live and work in the area and to minimize the impacts. Um, that is the ultimate goal for the uh, project when this, this is under construction. Um, no tenemos planes específicos aún sobre cómo se va a manejar el tráfico durante la construcción. Pero sabemos que como la, el, la, uno, la 95 va a ser reemplazada por el Departamento de Transporte, vamos a estar seguros de que la, a existir la coordinación entre los contratistas de la ciudad y el contratista del Departamento de Transporte para minimizar los impactos a, lo, a los a automovilistas. La idea principal es que los impactos sean los menores posibles y la, el objetivo es mantener acceso a todos los lugares al, en la zona, ya sean casas, ya sean lugares de trabajo, y minimizar ese impacto para que no se tenga uh, uh, un impacto negativo en, en ese acceso. All right, our next question is about the plantings. Uh, Megan would like to know, how will the plantings be maintained and what funds will be used for the upkeep of the new features to be installed? Um, we are keeping maintenance uh, the forefront of our minds with the implementation of this project. We certainly don't want to implement something that cannot be maintained. And so uh, with the plantings in particular, we are looking at native plantings that are more low maintenance in nature. Um, so it's not grass that needs to be constantly mowed and things like that. 
Um, and we are also going to be working very closely with the Watershed Council and their River Rangers program to ensure that this is well maintained and well loved for a long time into the future. La pregunta fue sobre el tipo de plantas que están uh, planeadas usar a lo largo del corredor. Eh, no hay, eh, la idea es escoger plantas que sean de fácil mantenimiento, no uh, necesariamente eh, poner pastos o césped que necesite con, eh, mantenimiento constante. Eh, la idea es que sean plantas nativas, que sean adaptables, resistentes a la, a la nieve. Y la, eh, el, el objetivo también es que la ciudad pueda trabajar con el Buenos Aires uh, uh, Watershed Council, eh, el programa de ellos en donde los, power, los um, park rangers ayudan a mantener las zonas verdes eh, dentro del, del área del corredor. Thank you, Francisco. Our next question is about the current guardrail that lines the riverbank. Um, Denise has said, uh, the current guardrail that lines the riverbank feels awfully muscle bound for its purpose. It is contrary to the softness and gentleness of the riverbank. And she would like to know if it will be replaced. Um, we did look into replacing the, the guardrail. I tend to agree with you that it is uh, perhaps not as well suited to this this location as we would we would like it to be and we would like something softer there. Uh, the, the, the cost for this particular project was beyond the, the scope and budget that we're able to provide. However, uh, we will be looking at painting the guardrail along the corridor and we'll continue to look for future opportunities to to replace it and soften that that barrier up a bit. La pregunta indicaba si el, la barrera metálica que separa a la banqueta a la acera con el río es demasiado uh, grande, se siente que es demasiado uh, potente para el, el objetivo de mantener a la gente y a los automovilistas uh, seguros y de no caer el río. Eh, en busca, um, el, el equipo de diseño coincide con esa opinión. Eh, buscamos unas opciones para poderlo reemplazar. Uh, pero eh, desafortunadamente el costo del reemplazo es mucho más allá del dinero que existe eh, para este proyecto. De cualquier forma, el proyecto eh, hará una um, rehabilitación de esa barrera metálica, eh, al menos pintarla y reparar cualquier parte que esté un poco dañada uh, y se sigue explorando para que en un futuro pueda posiblemente re ser reemplazada por algo más amigable. All right, our next question, uh, Mark would like to know, how, is the, how does the plan take into account opportunities for children to play along the path, like pocket playgrounds with green infrastructure? Um, we are looking at opportunities along the corridor to create pocket parks. Uh, one of those is proposed for the Eagle Kinsley intersection, and there are a few smaller ones proposed along the corridor. Um, Ellen or John, would you like to add any more detail? Uh, sure, this is this is John. I can add a little bit of detail. I think um, the project is tricky in some ways in that it's adding a, an urban trail. Uh, it's a, a linear project where there isn't a lot of room within the right of way to work with, but we have identified really um, the key places where we do think we can find those places that are gathering points or, or pocket parks. Um, and we've identified those. And the, the first one that really rose to the top of the list was outside Paul Cuffey School. Um, so we met, went to meet with the school and heard about what they were looking to do. And we're really excited to, to make that connection because of the school's connection with the maritime um, curriculum and their desire to get to the river and have more places to get outside. So we think that the first pocket park um, we'll have green infrastructure, we'll offer a way to really be a teaching tool and to get a better connection to the river. Um, we know that, you know, opportunities for children to play along the path um, would include step off points where there are the existing kind of cutouts for benches, which are pretty small spaces. And there, there are opportunities for kids of different ages. I don't think we're envisioning as part of the park um, play structures or anything like that. Uh, la pregunta en específico fue si había algún plan para considerar eh, 
parques de juegos alrededor del, del, del um, o, o elementos que pueden ser como columpios, resbaladillas que los niños puedan ocupar cerca de los uh, mini parques. Eh, la identificación de los mini parques fue eh, en función no solamente de donde la topografía del río era, um, uh, coincidía para po po poder po uh, implementar estos mini parques, pero también en pero también eh, eh, los lugares en donde hay suficiente actividad cerca del río, en donde el mini parque podría ser utilizado. Entonces, el primero que fue más identificado fue el que está cerca de Polk Coffee School. Cuando nos reunimos con ellos, ellos demostraron uh, interés en poner un área que los estudiantes de la escuela pudieran eh, acceder para tener un poco de contacto, si no directo con el agua, pero sí con la naturaleza del río. Eh, se están... Eh, eh, teniendo en cuenta ciertos elementos como bancas, como eh, eh, trolleses, uh, pero no necesariamente algún juego como una resbaladilla o un columpio. Um, no hay suficiente espacio para estos elementos. Sin embargo, la, el área es, las áreas serán diseñadas de una manera en que los niños puedan disfrutarlo, de, 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 los niños con sus familias puedan disfrutarlo de, de forma natural y conveniente y agradable. Thank you. All right, our next question, um, we have a question from Oscar. Um, how can you move forward with this plan? It is part of the three-part plan, the ordinance, the TIF, and the vision. Um, not sure what this question is. Um, by, by TIF, I, I would assume you're referencing to a tax increment financing district. Uh, there, there is no tax increment financing district currently proposed for this, this corridor or to fund this project. Um, you are correct that this, uh, this particular project is referenced in the Wenaskwetugget Vision Plan, which again is available on the project website. We'll bring that up at the end of this slide. Uh, who is paying for this? Oh, sorry, Francisco, do you want to answer that first question in Spanish? Sí, Mar yes, Martina. Um, ¿Cómo se puede seguir adelante con ese plan si es parte de una tercera parte del plan en las ordenanzas de la ciudad? ¿Es parte de la eh, zona de incrementos de, de impuestos y de la visión? Este plan es parte del master plan, del vision plan para la zona de Wenskatoket, que también está disponible en, en línea. Um, es consistente con, con, con el plan eh, en sí. Um, yep. Thank you, Francisco. Okay, who is paying for this? Uh, funds for this project are programmed to come from the State Transportation Improvement Program, their Transportation Alternatives Program in particular, that is part of the STIP. Um, that is about $6 million in funding, uh, and that is partially paying for the, the engineering work that is happening right now, the design work and public engagement. Um, there is also additional funding com coming from the city's capital improvement program. That is a bond initiative that was passed to help pay for public infrastructure such as this and paving sidewalks and things like that. La pregunta es cómo se va a pagar este proyecto. Hay dos fuentes de ingresos o fuentes de dinero para esto. Está en el plan de, de mejoras para los sistemas de transporte del estado. Hay 6 millones de dólares dedicados para esto, incluyendo un millón, que incluyen un millón de dólares en el diseño, que es como se está pagando uh, el diseño de este proyecto. Además, se está incluyendo una porción en el fondo que tiene la ciudad para mejorar la infraestructura que incluye eh, mejoras para las aceras, para reventar uh, calles, para mejorar semáforos. Entonces, el, el dinero son, son, están en, en, eh, disponibles para la ciudad y, y de acuerdo con los usos para los que fueron destinados. Thank you. I think we're going to take uh, maybe two or three more questions and then we're going to try to wrap things up because we want to make sure everybody understands the next steps and where they can find project information. Um, okay, um, when is the city going to take comments from the stakeholders? Uh, the, right now, that's, this is what we're doing. So continue to type your questions in. If, we don't, if we're not able to get to your questions tonight, it looks like we're, we're not gonna get through all of them. We will provide written answers to questions. 
uh, that'll be available on the project website maybe in a week or so. So keep an eye out there. Uh, ¿Cuándo es? Se ¿Tendrá oportunidad la, las personas para proveer eh, eh, de opiniones sobre el proyecto para la ciudad? Uh, la, la, reuniones como esta eh, son importantes para que podamos recibir los comentarios sobre lo que les gusta, sobre lo que no les gusta. Por favor, sigan escribiendo las preguntas en el chat. Uh, desgraciadamente no tendremos tiempo para responder todas en este eh, formato en línea, pero todas las preguntas que sean uh, remitidas a través del, uh, del chat serán, están siendo eh, eh, escritas y habrá una um, lista de preguntas con las respuestas eh, respectivas disponible en el sitio de web del proyecto, en el sitio de web de la ciudad. All right, great. We have time for about two more. Uh, what kind of maintenance will be required for the underground filters and who will be responsible for it? Uh, I don't know, Francisco or John or Ellen, if one of you wants to talk about uh, the underground filters and the maintenance responsibilities associated with those. Uh, sure, this is John. I can jump in to answer that question, and it's a great one. Um, so the design of the stormwater green infrastructure, the intent is to make it as straightforward and visible as it possibly can be. So right now stormwater runoff and the pollutants that, that come along with it are kind of swept away through catch basins and pipes right into the river. So if we're introducing these systems that were filter that runoff, we are designing into them pretreatment um, elements. So those will be small um, areas that will catch as much of the sand and sediment as possible right near the, the curb and gutter as possible um, so that they can easily be cleaned out and you can see when they're starting to do their job um, so that the city who has ultimate maintenance responsibility or the um, watershed council river rangers can see that it needs to be cleaned out and it could be done so relatively easily um, with a shovel. So that's part of why we're excited to work together with the council um, in the design to iron out exactly how that can be as, as straightforward as it possibly can be and often be a part of a landscape contractor's um, responsibility and what they, they know how to do. Uh, the question was regarding the maintenance. Oh, sorry. La pregunta fue re, re, en relación al mantenimiento que será requerido para los filtros que estarán bajo, bajo el, en el subsuelo y quién será responsable de esos. Uh, como John explicaba, los, um, los dispositivos son de fácil mantenimiento. Es muy, y será muy sencillo verificar si existe sedimento. Eh, el mantenimiento será muy simple. La ciudad es responsable entre la ciudad y el uh, Watershed uh, Water Council. Serán responsables del mantenimiento y ellos eh, con el programa de los Park Rangers podrán eh, continuamente verificar que el, los dispositivos están trabajando de la manera in, in, eh, eh, para la que fueron diseñados de infiltrar el agua, pero cuando exista ese sedimento habrá una manera fácil y sencilla de abrir esos dispositivos y eh, poder eliminar y removerlos para que esos uh, filtros sigan trabajando en el futuro. Thank you, Francisco. Um... We're going to take a one last question here, um, and I believe it was submitted in Spanish. So if Francisco, if you wouldn't mind reading that and um, providing uh, interpretation in English for us once you're, once you're done answering that, that'd be great. Sure, Martina. La pregunta es, participé en uno de los encuentros donde tuvo la oportunidad de hacer algunas propuestas. En esta ocasión observo que se han tomado en cuenta la actividad de kayak en el río, los accesos de kayak al río. La pregunta es, independientemente de los niveles de agua, que son variables de acuerdo a las mareas en la bahía, el río tiene mucho, mucha evidencia de material sedimentario. ¿Se va a dragar o extraer un poco de los materiales aluvionales para garantizar la navegación? Um, de, la, no tengo la respuesta, pero la uh, pregunta es, uh, someone who participated in previous uh, meetings, and um, he's happy to have uh, his questions, his proposals to be heard. Uh, he's noticed that there are um, kayak launches proposed. The question specifically has to do that, regardless of the water level on the river because of the um, tides on the bay, 
there is evidence on the river of sediments on the base of the of the riverbed. Uh, his question is if there is going to be an um, uh, an activity to remove some of that sediment material from the from the water river, uh, riverbed to um, provide enough space for navigation of the boats. And I think Martina or Alicia, that question would be better answered by any of you. I'll, I'll let Alicia answer that one if she's willing. Well, the, the question was about w whether there would be um, bank, some bank removal so that there would be um, more room for the boats. Is that, is that, am I understanding that correctly? Yes, 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 Alicia. For kayak okay. navigation, Alicia, sediments um, within the riverbed itself, I think. Oh, within the riverbed. I, you know, I don't think that this plan includes any sediment removal in the riverbed. Although I love that idea because we do have trouble navigating the river and we use it all the time. So, you know, right now we have to go at high tide. So the answer is we would love to do it, but it's not part of this project. Y la respuesta como contestó Alicia es que son, están um, conscientes de que existe este problema con los sedimentos en el río y quisieran que se pudiera hacer Eh, no hay ningún plan en específico en este momento. No hay dinero en el eh, contemplado para esta actividad en el proyecto como está presentado en este momento, pero es ciertamente algo que son conscientes y que están buscando que se pueda realizar en breve. Thank you, Francisco. Well, um, unfortunately, we weren't able to get through all of the questions that were asked. Thank you all for engaging in this and asking so many questions. Again, uh, for, for those of you who we weren't able to get to, we've been addressing these in, um, in order uh, that we received them, and we will provide written answers to all questions, and those will be available on the project website. I'm going to hand things over to Alicia and Jessica, who will talk about wrapping up and next steps. Really, I just want to take the time to thank people for coming to the meeting and asking all your very thoughtful questions and giving us your comments. We truly appreciate your attending and we look forward to your continued input. And most of all, we look forward to building this amazing greenway over the next couple of years. There was a question on the timeline and we're scheduled to do construction in 2021 and 2022. We're finishing design this year and part of next year. And if we can go to the slide at the end, um, if you have questions and comments that you didn't get to tonight, Jessica's email and phone number are listed on this final slide as soon as we get to it. Um, and you can always contact her at that information. We will have this presentation posted on the Winasquatucket River Watershed Council website. It's also gonna be posted on the city's website and you can see it's listed right there. Um, so if you want to review this or if you didn't get a chance to be at the whole thing or you wanted to tell your friend who didn't get a chance to be here to uh, find out what happened tonight, they can be at the whole entire meeting um, shortly because this, this whole presentation will be posted at that website. So have a great evening and next time we hope to see you in person. Good night.